this is the second discussion on microeconomics and today part of discussion is demand and its analysis so let's go to so objectives of today's discussion we have listed three objectives first to understand what is demand and its determinants then we will try to analyze that demand and we will try to also classify the demand into various types and your learning objective learning outcome would be to understand determinants of demand and its relationship with the price it's going to be interesting because we are going to discuss many examples so what is demand in economics demand in layman's language has a different meaning but meaning of demand in economics it means willingness to buy plus ability to pay when these two conditions come together both are satisfied then we call it as a demand in a business world only this type of demand is actually used we can make some use of it otherwise when the people say they want to buy a plane they want to buy a ship they want to buy a car and other things and if it is not backed up by ability to pay then it is simply a desire it's just a wish it has absolutely no use in a business world right so demand means it's a willingness to buy plus ability to pay is called as a demand so keep that in mind it's easy now how the demand is made up demand has various influences so demand is a function of many things why people buy automobile why people buy many products because they got needs psychological needs physiological needs right and when they try to buy there are various things you know which you can you can check it out on the screen that the demand is a function of price of the good supply of the good price of substitute goods which are sold in the market supply of supplies substitute goods bank interest rates if you are buying a house you are uh, you know launching a big business project you are taking a loan yes bank interest rate would matter fuel prices if you are doing a transport business or you are transporting something fuel prices is a point of consideration taxes income of consumers and taste and preferences of the consumers also matters when it comes to fast moving consumer goods or something like that in industrial goods things would little different taste and preferences of consumers it matters especially for fast moving consumer goods and it keeps changing right it also matters on slow moving consumer goods as well so all these things they are never stable they keep changing and the demand is also influenced by this dynamic factors that's why demand keeps fluctuating whenever demand is rising it means influence is you know by these all factors and many more factors is there definitely and it is favorable that's why demand is growing now i take example of a short term period in such a time all other factors that we have just discussed they remain almost stable or there are very minor changes that we can safely ignore them taste and preferences it takes times to change bank interest rate it takes times to change 
all right and likewise what is left what is left vulnerable is a price now here price can change up and down all other things we assume that they are stable and we can safely ignore them at least for the sake of discussion they are always not stable definitely but just for the sake of understanding let's assume that all other things are constant and price is volatile it's changing in such cases demand is a function of price alone provided that other things are constant now based on this concept i right, just will go ahead there was a british economist called sir alfred marshall right he devised a law which is very famous and it is called as a law of demand in economics he stated demand is inversely proportional to the price of that good when other things being constant so mathematically we can say demand is inversely proportional to the price the mathematical expression is on the screen that you can see right dx demand of commodity x is equal to function of 1 upon px p is a price of commodity x so what does it mean it means whenever price rises demand falls and vice versa price falls demand rises as simple as that and it keeps happening again and again and it is a major influence is a price even today you will see if something is offered at little less prices people will stand in a queue to buy those products if prices are less of course expensive products had have, have their own demands right these are different demand types that we'll discuss later on so let's take example can we plot the demand on a graph paper so we'll take example of a product it's a sugar right the price of the sugar is rupees 40 per kg and it is being sold 4 kgs per week let's assume that in next week price falls to rupees 35 and naturally because price falls demand goes up and new demand is 6 kg so we'll just try to plot it i do not have a graph paper right now but i can just show it on a screen that this is how it will look like right price is plotted on vertical axis that's a y-axis and on horizontal axis we have plotted the demand in kgs so we got two points with x and y coordinate 40 is a price 4 is a demand in kgs next point is 35 that is reduced price and increased demand is 6 i have connected these two points and i can draw a line this line we call it as a demand curve although it looks like a line right now but in reality whenever we have more sample size of such points it can tend to be a curve So, demand can be plotted on graph paper with proper scale or we can use uh, any computer template with proper you know, uh, formatting and we can always plot and try to learn and try to analyze something. Now, another point is, today's objective is types of demand. So, I have listed few types here and we will go through it very fast autonomous demand that demand that doesn't depend on any other products demand for example demand of rice it's a need 
by uh, biological need that people in india they consume rice so yes rice is required very you know inverse to that is deuteronomous demand where demand of certain products that depends on demand of some something else for example demand of cement demand of housing paint demand of uh, kitchen appliances right largely depends on construction industries housing demand if more flats more houses are newly constructed and sold naturally more of of cement is required more housing appliances would be required and more housing paints are required and whenever construction industry will lose the demand for the flats right naturally demand for cement demand for kitchen appliances and demand for housing paints would also slow down a little bit or sometimes little more likewise there is a demand which is you know uh, some for tobacco tobacco products or alcoholic drinks where government discourages to buy throughout the world at least in india it is there so this is called as a unwholesome demand there is a demand but uh, government is discouraging you to purchase those products then sectorial demand and season wise demand season wise demand keeps fluctuating we just uh, take example of umbrella and rainy products right rainy shoes umbrellas season wise demand coolers fans required in summer season sectorial demands we got many sectors in business world like pharmaceutical sector energy sector automobile sector banking sector all right industrial chemicals the sect list of sectors is very wide and likewise the demand of their own products in every sector would vary you can take example of irregular demand where demand pattern is not fixed it's very irregular difficult to predict sometimes you know uh, museums uh, sometimes garment shop they witness such type of irregular demand demand suddenly picks up during off season or maybe very sunny day in summer demand is very high and sometimes demand is absolutely flat during rainy season again in rainy season if uh, people have holidays weekends connected to some holidays and if they get leisure time they suddenly jump in to buy something in garment shops and even in rainy season demand just goes up All right so irregular demand is another pattern full demand means you are utilizing your 100% capacity for such products you know in your plant we can say it's a full demand over full demand means it's a more demand than you can handle your capacity to manufacture it's let's say 1000 but you got demand of 2000 over full demand latent demand is a demand which is still not satisfied for example two wheelers turning on water as a fuel it's a demand it's a latent demand it's hidden demand right if somebody can invent that successfully people would buy more of the two wheelers right why they would buy costly fuel such so, such a type of two wheelers or four wheelers are in latent demand where water can be used as fuel all right other demands are there negative demand where people you know, dislike to buy those products and services like vaccination dentistry work etc etc they don't want to go there happily i think uh this much discussion is enough for this point so in next video we will check out the details of law of demand 
that we have discussed in this video more elements of law of demand will be discussed in detail thank you very much for your time